Ever since the original Final Fantasy released way back in 1987, players have embarked on quests that have seen them trying to defeat the evil foe that's trying to rain down fiery hell on civilization. But they've also been on more personal quests to try and unlock the most powerful weapons in the game so that when they did choose to square off against said evil foe, there would be no quarter shown. It would mean the ensuing battle or battles would be swift with damage caps being hit at every turn. Now, some of these weapons have been relatively easy to obtain as they can naturally be unlocked through progression with the main story. Cloud's Ultima Weapon springs to mind here, as does Lightning's Ultima Weapon in Lightning Returns. But for every ultimate weapon that's just handed to you on a silver platter, there are many, many more that require either plenty of time, skill, just sheer luck, or a combination of all three in order to obtain them. Some of them, as I'm sure you can appreciate, are much more difficult to obtain than others, and this was a topic that was actually suggested for us to cover by one of our premium Patreon supporters by Anna Ahern, as they wanted us to run through what we feel are the hardest ultimate weapons to obtain across the numbered series titles. Now, for reference, as pretty much all of the celestial weapons in Final Fantasy X are particularly difficult to obtain, albeit for different reasons, we've made the decision that we're only going to be featuring one of them in this particular video. We also won't be including weapons that are difficult to obtain on blind playthroughs because as a player, you just didn't know any better. Examples of this would be Barrett's Missing Score or the Zodiac Spear from the original Final Fantasy XII. And while we're on the subject of exclusions, we will also be omitting Sighting Grap from the Zodiac Age as even though it should be an absolute brat to obtain, Astute gamers have now found a way to 100% guarantee its acquisition, so it therefore is much more of a formality and isn't that difficult to obtain. So anyway, with those disclaimers out of the way, my name is Daryl and these are, in my opinion at least, the 7 ultimate weapons that are probably the hardest to obtain. Starting with the relic weapons in Final Fantasy XI. As Final Fantasy XI looked to expand beyond its initial tentative steps into the realm of the MMORPG, Square Enix launched its first expansion which was dubbed Rise of the Zillart. This added a whole host of new content including new jobs, new characters, new regions, new story missions, and most importantly, new weapons. Now anyone who, like me, played Final Fantasy XI back in these heady early days knows that almost everything about the game was based around patience, dedication and teamwork, and unlocking the relic weapons back then was perhaps the biggest testament to this. Upon obtaining level 65, rank 6 in any of the starter nations, and by fulfilling some rather specific requirements, players could work towards obtaining a relic weapon by entering the realm of Dynamis an alternate universe version of Vanadiel that was quite literally the stuff of nightmares. Once inside, players would have an initial time limit of one hour to defeat as many enemies as possible, with the hope of obtaining a relic starter weapon and as much ancient currency as possible, as this would be needed to upgrade the starter weapon to its ultimate form. Now, including the initial starter weapon, there were five stages you would need to go through to unlock the true potential of a relic weapon, and as you'd expect, at each stage the requirements for either time or wealth would get more and more demanding. As a general rule of thumb, the first upgrade would need approximately 3 to 400 of an ancient currency, the next would need 1400 to 1600, the next would need 6000 to 6200, and the final stage would need another 10,000. In today's market, if we're going by prices on the Asura server, if you were to purchase what you would need for just the first stage from the auction house, then this would cost you approximately 2.6 million gil. For comparison, the last stage would cost you approximately 20 million gil, and then you'd need to add on all the time spent at each stage to not only acquire the gil, but to farm the non-tradable or auctionable items that can only be obtained from defeating enemies in Dynamis. This process was an absolute ball ache back when I played Final Fantasy XI between 2003 and 2006, and I'm not exaggerating at all. If memory serves correctly, it could take months for an alliance of endgame Link Shell members to obtain just one, I repeat, one of these maxed out relic weapons, 
and it meant that if the person who was lucky enough to be the recipient of said relic weapon then just happened to leave the link shell, well then let's just say that people could become very angry very quickly. I don't know of any instances where it led to actual aggravation in real life as we saw in some other MMOs, but either way it wouldn't be a pleasant experience. Now as the game has developed further, the developers have built upon the concept of relic weapons and they've also made them easier to obtain, although that's not really saying much as they're still extremely difficult. According to Deeth on the Final Fantasy XI subreddit, obtaining a relic weapon can still take around a month or so to obtain, but it could be as little as two weeks if you have the cash to splash in the auction house. Ultimate weapons added in the New York expansion such as the Mythic weapons, Empyrean weapons and Aeonic weapons, they are also still tough to obtain if you're playing Final Fantasy XI now, but based on the historical significance of obtaining a relic weapon in general, they are the ones that I would consider to be the most difficult to obtain. Next up we have Lulu's Onion Knight in Final Fantasy X. I mentioned in the intro to this video that the celestial weapons are in general hard as nails to obtain, and that isn't an exaggeration. To obtain a weapon and unlock its true potential by obtaining a crest and sigil, you have to undertake some pretty arduous tasks. These ranged from completing the Cactor subquest on Bicanel Island through to undertaking the butterfly minigame in Macalania, and even achieving a time of 0 seconds in the chocobo race against the trainer. Needless to say, obtaining the majority of these weapons in their completed form wasn't for the faint of heart, but there was one weapon in particular that pushed things even further, Lulu's Onion Knight, and more specifically, obtaining the Venus Sigil for it. To obtain this elusive key item, players have to venture to the Thunder Plains, where they are required to dodge 200 consecutive bolts of lightning. Now the catch outside of this just being incredibly difficult, is that outside of counting in your own mind, you have no idea how many lightning bolts you've actually dodged, and if you leave the area before dodging enough, the count resets to zero. Now if you consider that lightning bolts arrive approximately every 3 to 4 seconds in game, that means you're looking at around 11 to 12 minutes of constant focus, and if you make one mistake during this time, it's back to the drawing board. Now there are some tricks that you can employ to make predicting the lightning bolts a bit easier, but you still have to actually dodge them, and as you get closer and closer to that 200 mark, the pressure really starts to build. Perhaps the worst part about this whole thing is that once you hit 200, you don't instantly just unlock the item. No, you have to venture back to Rin's travel agency, avoiding lightning bolts on the way to see if you actually even hit 200, because if you didn't and you miscounted, well as I said, you just reset your total and you have to start all over again. Harsh. Very harsh. Some may argue that obtaining the Jupiter Sigil is also rather difficult depending on your tolerance of Blitzball, as you need to play quite a lot before it appears as a prize in the league, but the Venus Sigil still just takes the cake for me, and in my opinion it makes Lulu's Onion Knight the hardest ultimate weapon to obtain in Final Fantasy X. Third on our list is the Tornasol from Final Fantasy XII. Even though they removed some of the more annoying quirks for obtaining weapons with the release of the Zodiac Age, some of the weapons found in this game are still rather taxing to try and acquire due to the bizarre system. The idea behind this system is that it's a special shop where you can sell certain items that you've acquired during your travels, and once you do so, new items will become available for you to purchase. It all sounds pretty neat, right? But it can be incredibly time consuming due to the network of purchases that are required in some instances to get the more advanced items. Perhaps the hardest weapon to obtain through the bazaar is the Tornasol, but if you're rocking the Night Class, it's probably worth hunting down. So anyway, to go through this process you have to acquire the Sunflower, which isn't as straightforward as it probably sounds. Not only do you need to have 600,000 gil just lying around, you also need to acquire 3 Gem Steel, 3 Imperial Souls and 3 Serpentarius. The challenge is that none of these items are drops from enemies, they are instead also acquired from the bazaar system. Serpentarius, for example, needs 2 Serpent Eyes, 4 Snake Skins and 1 Harkana, while the Gem Steel needs 2 Damascus Steel, 2 Hellgates Flames and 1 Scarletite. And if we look at these items, 
well, you can start to see why this might be a little bit more time consuming than initially meets the eye. Serpent eyes, for example, only drop from basilisks, but they can also be obtained by poaching a basilisk or a grey malta. As a drop, with no chain, there is a 1% chance of obtaining a serpent eye, but if you get it up to a level 3 chain, it's at least a 5%. Likewise, poaching also offers a 5% chance to drop, and don't forget, you need two of these for this one item. Then you have loot such as the High Arcana, which also needs to be created in the bazaar by finding 10 Normal Arcana, a Face Stone, and the Soul of Thamasa. Needless to say, obtaining enough loot and gill to even get to the point where you can purchase the Sunflower takes a lot of running around and a lot of farming, but if you have the patience, you'll end up with a pretty decent sword in the end. Our next weapon is from Final Fantasy V, and it's the ultimate hand bell, the Tinker Bell. With Final Fantasy V featuring such a diverse array of jobs, it only seemed fitting that the developers would also choose to offer a whole host of related weapons that could be used to beat down the game's various enemies. It meant that you could choose from more traditional weapon types like swords, axes and bows, but it also meant you could explore the more interesting possibilities promoted by weapons like boomerangs, whips and handbells. Now, with there being so many categories, it does mean that there are a whole host of extremely powerful weapons to obtain, but perhaps the most annoying to obtain is the ultimate handbell, which is called the Tinkerbell. To obtain this rather powerful weapon, you have to square off against Twintania, one of the demons of the rift that resides in the interdimensional rift. This probably doesn't sound too challenging, but what makes the acquisition of the Tinkerbell so tough is that outside of it being a troublesome fight in general, it's also a one-time fight, so if you don't get it when you beat Twintania, you have to reset the game and try again. Outside of that, you also have to be mindful of which attack phase Twintania is in when it's defeated, as this changes the rewards from the battle. For reference, to have a chance of obtaining the Tinkerbell, you must defeat Twintania in its non-charging form, or else you will see the Murasame instead. And if you do happen to defeat it while it's in its non-charging form, then you still only have a 6.25% chance of receiving it as a drop, which is incredibly harsh, especially compared to some of the ultimate weapons you can obtain in this game. Next, we have the weapons that are obtained by defeating the weapons refrain in Final Fantasy XIV. Now, we've been chastised in the past about not including content around Final Fantasy XIV, but it just so happens that obtaining the game's ultimate weapons is an absolute nightmare, so there was never any question about them appearing on this list. Not too long ago, as part of patch 4.31, which was referred to as Under the Moonlight, the development team decided to add a second ultimate difficulty raid called the Weapons Refrain, with the aim of making it even tougher than the first. And in that regard, it did not disappoint. It was five days until there was a successful completion, with the free company called Entropy claiming the glory, and after 10 days, only three other free companies had tasted victory. So what made this particular fight so tough? Well, first off, you had to face ultimate forms of Garuda, Ifrit, and Titan in succession, and the mechanics had been purposely changed from their previous difficulties to confuse players and make them have to rethink their strategies. Once you defeated them, well, that's when things would start to get even more interesting as you would have to square off against Ultimate Ultima Weapon, who continually summons the previously defeated Primals. Needless to say, completing this raid is a particularly serious endeavour, but upon doing so, you will receive the Ultima Totem, and this can be exchanged for one of the Ultima Weapons, which, if I do say so myself, look really rather cool. Alright, so our penultimate weapon on this list is the Onion Sword from the Final Fantasy IV Remake. When the decision was made to re-release Final Fantasy IV on the Nintendo DS, the developers looked at how they could supplement the original experience with new content, and one of the ways they did this was to make it possible to find more items that you could trade with the Tail Collector. In the original version of Final Fantasy IV, you could only trade the Rat Tail and the Pink Tail, but in the DS version they added new tails which were black, blue, green, yellow and red. These allowed players to unlock a new suite of onion equipment, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus solely on the onion sword. Now, I will confess that compared to the other weapons on this list, the onion sword is perhaps the easiest to obtain, but it can still be somewhat time consuming if luck really isn't on your side. 
Once you're strong enough, you will need to head to the Lunar Subterrain, but before you do so, make sure you buy plenty of Sirens. Once you're on B8, 9 or 10, you will need to use a Siren, and once you do, a Red Dragon will appear. If you're successful in defeating it, then there's a 0.4% chance of acquiring a Red Tail, which means, well, you may end up having to fight quite a few Red Dragons, as that's odds of a drop happening every 250 fights. The good news is that if you utilise the Treasure Hunter augment, then you can increase your odds to 0.8%, but that still isn't particularly high. If you do manage to stick it out though and get yourself a red tail, then you'll need to head over to the Adamant Isle Grotto to exchange it with the Tail Collector for the Onion Sword, which is rather beastly. Not only does it provide an attack value that is equal to double of your character's level, it also has accuracy that is equal to your character's level plus 50, and it also adds strength that is equal to a third of your character's level. So yeah, it's pretty hench, and if you're able to afford the time and the patience, it will make your life a lot easier. If you're so inclined, you may also want to think about getting a second one, as the weapon can be equipped by both Cecil and Kane. And with that, we are now going to move on to the pièce de résistance, Steiner's Excalibur 2 in Final Fantasy IX. There are only a few weapons in Final Fantasy IX that are classified as knight swords, and they are all pretty beastly. But it's safe to say that none of them compare to Excalibur 2, and that's in relation to both its stats and the massive ordeal you have to go through if you want to think about obtaining it. Now, I've no idea which clever soul on the Final Fantasy IX development team came up with this idea, but all I have to say to them is, Kudos, because it's perhaps the harshest weapon acquisition mechanic in the entire franchise. Instead of just saying, you have to beat this enemy or you have to complete this minigame, they made the decision to have the speed at which you play through the game be the deciding factor as to whether or not you can obtain Excalibur 2. In short, you have to make it to a certain point in the game within a certain time, and if you don't, you can't get the weapon. Simple, right? Well, that certain point is the gate to space room that resides right at the end of the game within Memoria. And once there, you also need to defeat Lich, before you even have the option to actually pick up the weapon. The catch is that this all has to be done without the game clock exceeding 12 hours of playtime, which, if you played Final Fantasy IX, is harsh. Very harsh. And in the original version, this was actually made even harsher for those playing in Europe or other PAL regions as the game ran approximately 20% slower on those systems. But the clock did not. It meant you would actually need to reach the destination in under 10 hours of real time as opposed to the 12 that was required in the NTSC version. It should be noted though that with the new Steam and mobile versions of the game, it is a little bit easier to acquire Excalibur 2 as you have the ability to skip cutscenes you can also choose to disable random encounters, which helps to shave even more time off the clock. And for this particular challenge, every single second counts. If you do manage to obtain the weapon though, not only will you have made Steiner pretty epic, you will also be greeted by a lovely note that's been written by Enkidu, where he explains that after having the option, he actually decided to take Excalibur for himself, leaving Excalibur 2 for Gilgamesh to pick up later. And with that, my list has come to a conclusion. So yeah, there were 7 ultimate weapons that I feel are probably the hardest to obtain in the franchise. Are you in agreement or are there any you feel we've missed out? As always, let us know in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, if you'd like to join our growing community, then make sure you check out our Discord server. There's a link in the description below. And why not consider supporting us on Patreon? You get the satisfaction of knowing that you are helping to support us in the creation of these videos and you will be rewarded by, amongst other things, getting your name at the end of videos like these guys you're seeing right now. Alright guys, this is Daryl signing out. I will see you all next time for more Final Fantasy videos.